Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy. This is the program on AADL TV where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. The book that I am going to be talking about today is called Escaping Mr. Rochester, and this is by L.L. McKinney. Escaping Mr. Rochester is a young adult reimagining of the classic book by Charlotte Bronte called Jane Eyre. And even if you haven't read Jane Eyre, you can still read this book because one of the great things about this reimagining is the way that L.L. McKinney makes it her own story. And in fact, I would call this book sort of more of a conversation with the classic Jane Eyre rather than a reimagining because of what L.L. McKinney does with it. So if you have read Jane Eyre, you will know that the man that Jane Eyre goes to live with goes to be the governess of a child named Adele, the house of a man named Edward Rochester, and eventually they sort of fall in love. There's a secret that Edward Rochester has, which is that he's keeping a woman, his ex-wife, in the attic because she has gone crazy, according to this book. And when you think about that on its face, Mr. Rochester, who is portrayed in Jane Eyre as sort of this romantic hero eventually, though he's dark and gruff, that is a little bit suspect for locking someone in an attic. One of the first things that L.L. McKinney's book asks is what if the real villain in this story was Mr. Rochester. And she does even more than that by making it a queer romance. So Bertha Mason is the name of the woman who is in the attic in Jane Eyre and in Escaping Mr. Rochester. Jane Eyre and Bertha eventually fall in love in this book. Bertha is still Mr. Rochester's wife. He's imprisoned her for years, but there's more of a backstory as to why he has done that. And because he is so evil and villainous, this story works in such a way that Jane and Bertha have to work together in order to escape from Mr. Rochester. Here is a reimagining that at its heart is centering queer Black characters. Both Jane and Bertha are Black. Jane has been brought to Thornfield as this new governess. When Bertha Mason got married to Edward Rochester, she was very happy about it. She was thrilled very soon after she was betrayed. So Bertha and Jane are the ones who are telling us this story. And the chapters alternate between their points of view. And each chapter has a name at the heading so you know who's speaking, though the narrative styles are different. So I feel like you would know anyway. They have different voices. And there are parts of the book where they are actually in conversation with each other because they are writing each other letters. I really liked those parts. It was a really interesting way to take two characters whose minds we've been inside and have them talk to each other through the writing and through the page. Right from the start of this book, L.L. McKinney definitely paints Rochester as a cruel character. So there's no doubt in your mind that he is extremely villainous. He's just cast as this very evil-minded man who wants power and wants money and will manipulate and hurt anyone to get it. I wondered about making this character so villainous. It's so obvious on the page how bad he is. But then in thinking about it, by removing any nuance around that, there's no doubt in your mind that Mr. Rochester cannot be the hero of this story. Mr. Rochester is the underlying evil in this story. And there's no time when you question that. So that then can center the book on Jane and Bertha. Bertha Mason in the original Jane Eyre is pretty overlooked, except for being this character in the attic. The ward of Jane Eyre, Adele, the little girl that she's come to take care of, is also pretty overlooked in the original Jane Eyre. And Adele really has a personality and a significant role in this book. Jane becomes very attached to her, and a lot of their conversations are highlighted. And Adele takes some real risks to try and help Jane and Bertha. So she's really a character that is strongly developed. Adele also has experienced some pretty difficult things in her life. Her mother died. She is ignored by this man who may or may not be her father. And that really shows in her complex personality. 
The fleshing out of Bertha in this book is, I think, one of the best and most important parts. Bertha is understandably very angry. She has been locked in the attic, sometimes even literally chained up in the attic of this house, essentially since she got married to Mr. Rochester. So she was tricked and she's been used and she's been treated horribly and she's trapped. So she relays that with a real intensity and passion. One of the ideas around Jane Eyre is sort of this mad woman in the attic. It's something people talk about. This book looks at madness in a much different way. This exploration of female rage. And she's allowed to feel that. And she's allowed to be propelled by it. It's not dismissed as something hysterical in her. And Jane starts to realize what's going on. And she also sees ways that she's being tricked. She's not getting paid for her work. She doesn't like the way that Mr. Rochester treats her. And once she becomes aware of Bertha, she starts to get really angry too. And Jane feels a lot of anger in this book, which she is also allowed to explore. So this book, a lot of the action in this book is driven by this female rage, which is a real subversion of the original story. And that's one of the ways that I think this book, Escaping Mr. Rochester, is really more of a conversation than a reimagining. It's not to say that reading this book gives you just a feeling of rage. There are other feelings as well in this book. Jane and Adele have a really nice, sweet relationship. There is a cook named M who is a good friend to Jane. And Jane and Bertha's relationship develops in a really nice way through these secret notes. They're very hopeful. They're very funny. They're very smart. They're very kind to each other. And it's nice to see this unfold on the page despite what they are facing together. All of this keeps the romance in Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre's known for being this dark romance, but this book doesn't have this dark brooding man. He's not the one romanticized. The romance in L.L. McKinney's version in Escaping Mr. Rochester is the romance between Bertha and Jane. L.L. McKinney didn't feel a need to stick to the exact details of Jane Eyre. This takes place in the same sort of time period. The mansion has the same name. The school has the same name that Jane went to. The characters have the same names. Time and setting are changed slightly. Bertha's from New Orleans in this book. There is a queen on the throne, Queen Amelia, which doesn't clarify where or exactly when this story is taking place. By tweaking these small things, L. McKinney's offering us something new, but not dispelling or discrediting Charlotte Bronte's book. L. L. McKinney is just taking ownership of the story, which is a really important and not always accomplished way to reinterpret an original classic. And in this book, L. L. McKinney has taken it and said, what if, what if I wrote that story? How would I do it? While never shying away from the fact that this is the story of Jane Eyre. And by doing that too, she's also respecting Charlotte Bronte's original work. It means enough to her to use it as the backbone for her own story. And I think she has done that very successfully. She has taken a classic that is loved by many and looked at it in a new way, which can be read by people who love Jane Eyre and people who have never read Jane Eyre. But she has done some really important things by putting women front and center, putting queer Black women front and center, making the romance in this book between two women, and really making this a story for now and a story that people can read alongside the classic Jane Eyre. So I hope that you read Escaping Mr. Rochester by L.L. McKinney, whether or not you have read or whether or not you like Jane Eyre. Thank you for joining me.